Hello, and everyone, and welcome to the Human Colony Saturday webinar with Jim Charles. My name is Karen Newman. I'm your host. And today is Saturday, May the 12th, 2018. In the room, I have to see, we have Amanda, Christine, Dave, Dawn, Ava, Jim, of course, Leela, Marlene, Maz, Pamela, pa Paola. Oh, names I haven't heard before. This is exciting. Sheer. Stephanie, Steve, and myself. And so first to let you know, this is a paid webinar from Human Colony. And if you would like to join our paid webinars, you can become a member of uh, Human Colony. You go to hucolo.org forward slash webinars. And for $10 a month, you have, uh, you have a front seat row uh, in all of our webinars. And then also we have uh, two things uh, that are coming up. We have the Hucolo Ascension Workshop, which will be in Dansville. It's August 16th through the 21st, and for, it's $400 for five days, and that'll be filled with classes and channeling and all kinds of fun activities for everyone. So you can go to hucolo.org, and there's a sign-up link there. And also, if you haven't gotten it, you can get it on Kindle. There is a book that's been written based on the channelings of Jim Charles, and it's called From the Galaxy with Love. And it's a, it's a book for insiders and open souls who believe and want to know more. It's, been, it's Jim Charles' uh, channelings, and it, the commentary has been written by Max um, Rempel, who is another founder of Human Colony. So we're going to start with a blessing like we normally do. And since I just came back from India and I've now we have my teacher certification for mantra and Sanskrit uh, teaching. I'm going to start with a student teacher mantra, which is always at the beginning of every uh, class that you take. And it says basically, uh, may, the, may the teacher be inspired with wisdom and may the student be inspired to listen and to hear and to learn. So the, the mantra goes like this. It goes, Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvi Navarhi Tamastu Mavid Vishavahai. Let me just finish with Om. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. So. Oh, that's you, beautiful. Thank you. I'll teach it to everyone. It's generally call and response. So it's hard to do on a webinar, but it's call and response, and I'll teach it to everyone. It's a beautiful one. Well, and then Will has a, a prayer also. Perfect. Yes, please introduce everyone in a room. Oh, yes. In the room with me today is... Excuse me. Thank you. Angela, Will, Alan, Hello. and Ray. Hi, everybody over there. Hi. Go ahead. <laughs> Kohutas and the eat at the other who Sarianna at Katars Awataharna at Tishua Tornana a Katarsahan Chaita na Ohushai Kahanana Naya Chawatana na Akasasa Shishai a Kahodataria and Nahaski ear to Chayo Kota Nahaskana Chichiata Ardu Sini Chichihai Anna Titika to Kuda Harieta Sahashishi Kohuna Nawata Tadata Sikai Shishakayana Atari Kita at Kuata Tichia Tiki Shishikiwa Nihiaskana no Uyawata Riata. Greetings. The time is now for the alignment of many things. More observations, more information, and more enlightenment for the people of this planet. It is also a time for listening carefully and observing your own self in a way that you have not done before. Remember, remember to be self-aware of your tone, of your thoughts, and of the way things are moving in your life. For your missions depend on control and how much love that you are generating 
for the population and the people that are around you that need help. Be aware of yourself, but also be aware of the light that you are giving out so that you may attract the right people to you and that you might move forward in the most proper way possible. Amen to you who are already doing this, but do self-observations at this time so that you may be full of the information necessary when you encounter the world in your mission. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So for us, we have some requests um, that we that we would like uh, that have come from the room. Um, um, I have one thing before you do that. Oh, sure, go ahead. Um, I would like to uh, recognize that April Wright has passed. We uh, It was a few weeks ago, but I feel that it, um, there was, she had a really good heart, a really good uh, connection with many of you. And uh, I would just wanted to say we are sorry for her, the loss of her life. And um, if anybody wanted to say anything about her, that would be appropriate at this time, even though it has been a few weeks. We still want to make everyone aware that we are thinking of her and that uh, we loved her very much. She's a very lovely person. Yes. Does anyone want to say anything? If not, we would move forward. But I understand that uh, many of you knew her. Well, I will take a moment of silence for her and everyone say a small prayer for her as she has passed, and then we will move forward. Thank you, April, for who you were. And may your thoughts continue to move forward and your life force be recognized everywhere. Okay? Thank you for that. Go okay. ahead. Okay. So we have some requests. Uh, let me get to Shears. Shears request. He had a Saint May and Ushaya. I'm, I'm getting some feedback. I don't know if someone needs to mute the mic. Ushaya, who is a like the higher self of Jesus. Uh, Isaiah is supposed Isaiah. to. Isaiah, thanks, Shira. I... Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Odin as well. Yes, and another friend here asked for Grindel. He wants to. Right see what is going to be with the Israeli-Iranian conflict. Okay. And then Christine's asking about Maleva, that was a druid that was before the Roman times. Maleva? Maleva, M-I-L-E-V-A. She was a druid? Okay. She was a druid before the Roman times. And then also the question that came from Maz, uh, he was... He was requesting, uh, he was talking about an abductee that had an experience in the Khorazan province in Iran. Uh, and there was an ET race called the Marlik, and he, they're in Sirius, and he would like to uh, have information. So maybe someone from that, uh, that group, the, the Marlik from Sirius. Okay. Okay. Um, oh, Maleva is Einstein's first wife. And then she wants Maleva, the Einstein's first wife, and a druid that was before the Roman times. And I know why she wants a druid before the Roman times, because they basically wiped out the druids, the Romans. So. Uh, also, there's a request for Merlin or Merline, as he has actually corrected his uh, pronunciation of his name. Okay, and Leela's asking for Hartor from Egyptian times. Hartor, H-A-R-T-O-R, Hartor. Hartor. 
I've never heard that of that person. Maybe it is wrong. Uh, I... oh, Hathor. Yeah. No. Sorry. Hathors. Yes. Oh, the Hathors. That's a, the, a species. The healers. Yes. Yes, they are oh, the okay. the toners, the Hathors. Yes, oh, I know okay. who they are. Okay, got there in the end. <laughs> the Hathors, the Hathors. Okay, great. All right, and, very good. Okay. Um, very good. I will do a little bit of a meditation, and we'll be back. We'll see which one of these people want to come through, and uh, hopefully, we'll all have a very wonderful session. Yes, exciting. All right. Have a great day, and I will be back later. <laughs> okay, enjoy. We'll see you when you get back. Greetings, I am Elijah. I knew that you did not request me, but I do have to speak for a few moments before anyone else comes in. I wanted to speak of who God really is and what he means to his people and what his people mean to him. First of all, he understands humanity better than you think but I do not believe humanity understands him very well at times. You see, many people blame God for the loss of family members or tragedies that happen in their lives. They blame God for the things that are not right in their lives, and he is not to blame for these things. Although he does allow things to happen, he allows things to to manifest on this planet and all other planets in the universe that have life, it, there is a reason for these things, and it may be part of your contract with him before you even arrived. So do not blame him for the, the hardships and difficulties that you have, but love him that he can bring you through them in a greater way, in a faster way, in a way that will teach you how to be a stronger person, how to build your character, and how to help others that are going through these problems that you have already faced. Remember, many of your missions will be to talk to people and to bring people forth that understand what is happening in the world today. There is a great alignment of people coming that must lead the world into a new era, a new understanding of who God is, a new understanding of peace, a new understanding of the power of energies, the new understanding of each other as telepathy becomes part of what the world is about knowing each other in a way that you cannot know now, being able to feel the emotions of each other that you cannot feel now. Oh yes, there are some of you that do have these empathic feelings one to another, but when the time comes, they will be so much stronger and so much more compelling in a way. You know that God loves you, and he understands you. But please, know that his many facets of personalities include everything but hate. He does not hate. He cannot hate. He does not find any space in his realm for hatred, 
because it is not who he is. He does find place for anger sometimes when the wrath has been brought over and over, but he is slow to anger. He is slow to anger. But if you disobey over and over and over again, perhaps he will get angry a little and he will have to teach a lesson. But it will not be one of dire persecution or death. These are other things. His lessons are more compassionate and loving than you might think. These are the lessons and contracts that you have put yourself through in this lifetime are not his lesson, lessons from anger, but are more contracts that you have signed before you even arrived here. But remember this, you now have missions. Many of you here are ready to start missions or ready to uh, head out into a great unknown. And some of you have already started. Ask God for his, fa for his favor, for your mission. Bring him into your everyday life so that you may understand that you are protected in going the right direction. Do not be caught up in intellectualism or making yourself look smart because looking smart can actually be a downfall when the normal people of the world are trying to understand God and you're far above them in your intellectual understanding, you cannot relate one to another. But you may be able to relate to a certain group. But let me tell you, if you let God filter through in the way that he wants to, everyone can be reached. Everyone can be spoken to, not just those that are educated. Remember, it is who you are to love. And perhaps in your intellectualism, you can bring that love forth and maybe they will try to understand you more. But remember to come down to their level, not condescend, but to relate as a human being one to another. Relate in love one to another, for you did not start out your life as an intellectual. You did not start out in this world knowing many, many things, but you understood the basics. And many people are still there trying to understand the basics of what God is, what God means, and what God is presenting now to the world. So therefore, come down, come down. Not that you are not intellectual and not that you are not learned and have great insights about everything, but when you see needs, you must approach them with humility, with love, compassion, and not intellect. I know that many of you are very intellectual and have a great thought process. And I love that about you. Not that it is anything negative, but I must warn you, you will reach very few people if that is how you approach the world. If you approach the world being above them, they cannot reach you. They will not be able to attain so quickly what took all of your life to learn. So humble yourself. Create a, a love attitude. Create an understanding attitude. Create a, a compassion attitude. And let your healing, because love is healing, come forth. Let that healing come forth. Much love to you and all that have great missions. And there are many of you here. And some of them have already started, as I have mentioned. Move forward. 
in great compassion and humility and let your intellect co go to those that are already on your level. But when dealing with those of the regular population, come down so that they may be part of the wisdom of God that is within you. I leave you go now, and I will not ask for any questions. Bless you, Elijah. Thank you for, so much for your wisdom and sharing with us today. Thank you. I will bring someone else through at this time. Thank you. Much love to you all. Much love to you. Yeah. <clears throat> One moment, please. Okay, good. No. Yeah. Yeah, here I am. Someone Hi, called. We yeah. always are calling you. <laughs> Greetings, everyone. Now, I know that there's much concern about what's going on in Israel, Syria, Iran, Iraq and all the neighboring areas. And that is why I'm working in Israel and have been working in Israel for quite a while now. I am at the middle management level of the government working in that area. But my messages do get to the top because there is a great deal of communication all through that governmental system that um, whenever certain key words are spoken, then that information is looked at. Does that make sense to you? Key words are part of what is happening all over the world right now. There are certain things that will be said and certain things that will be understood as key words. Nuclear energy, power, weapons, and things of this nature are coming into vogue as key words in this day and age of a time when we are searching so dramatically for peace. And yet there are those that cannot be peaceful. Their souls are disrupted by all the things that they were taught and shown and the way that they were brought up and the inequality that they feel as human beings in the place that is called the Middle East. They feel less important. They feel that they are, but yet at the same time, they want to show their superiority and show the world that they are not less important. Does that make sense to you? But many have been taught and been talked down to as children and as parents, their forefathers have already uh, brought hatred through as a prejudice against one another. The 12 tribes of Israel are there and they all believe something similar but different, but yet they will not give up a single one of their beliefs to help the other or to merge with the other. And so jihad or religious wars, one with another, continue. And this is part of what is happening in this place. But yet it's greater than that because the arms and hands and legs from all over the world are reaching into the Middle East to be part of it, to be part of a greater... Uh, understanding. They want the oil. They want the wealth. They want to control things that are happening in this area because they see that this is an area that has a great deal of manipulating power. Do you not see that? Their great oil wealth and great uh, fossil fuels have caused a great shift in powers 
one place to another. And Iran wants to cause disruption throughout the Middle East by starting small skirmishes here and there. They have not been true to their alliances and not been true to what they have been saying, but they are ones that would cause great difficulty in that area, as you can see. Now we hear, have something happening that I did not want to happen, and that's bombing one place to the other. Israel, Iran, Syria, they are all coming together, and this is could be the spark of something very genuinely um, hostile and long-lasting. Well, it has been long-lasting, but I hope the fighting portion won't be long-lasting. However, it does not look good at the moment. I will entertain some questions if you wish. I know I'm not my usual giddy self today, but times <laughs> are estranged. People are concerned, and war is at hand. Okay. Um, Shir has a question. Yes. Hey, Grindel, this is uh, Nivi. How are you doing? Hey. Um, I wanted to ask about what is going on behind the scenes. Um, what is the uh, interest of the Israeli government, especially Bibi, about uh, the attacking of Iran? Power as usual. This is all about who has the power, who has the not only true power, but the vision of power. There are those that are allies with uh, Israel and those that are allies with some of these other places. It is an unfair alliance that one is being fed weapons and the other is not allowed to have them. One is uh, told to tear down their systems, but, but all around them, everyone else is being fed the weapons. So therefore, they feel a great deal of prejudice against them. One second, please, David, please mute your mic, please. Thank you. Does this make sense to you? Power is what it is all about. Control of the land and the area because it has been told and foreseen from prophecies on your planet and from alliances on your planet that one thing will happen or another. And they stand behind a verse in the Bible that says they are right. And everyone will find one that will support their own causes. And this is dangerous. I have a question about the attacks. Um, Iran proxies attacked uh, bases in Israel. They tried to. And then Israel retaliate, retaliated with, uh, rumor has it, some special weapons n not seen before. My question is, is this true? Are these weapons just special weapons? Or maybe do they have some kind of alien technology in them? They do not have alien technology, but they are special weapons. At least that's as far as I know. The information that has come down through to my level is that these weapons were uh, much more uh, much more scattered, meaning that when the bombs explode or when the the weapons explode, they actually uh, take up a greater amount of space. They they scatter. I see. Um, I agree. No, this is sheer. Um, I want to ask if there's something that uh, all of us can do. And do you know if the government uh, meeting in June is going to occur as scheduled? Hopefully it will. And so far it is still on. So that is all I can tell you at this time. And one, what can we do for uh, maintaining, the, to promote peace in, the, in, in these times? I do feel that... Something did change in the air that that uh, something did pass. In, there was a greater danger for war, in my perspective. Yes. You have picked it up correctly. 
we were hoping not to see this, but it has been predicted by prophecy that it would happen. But it will not destroy your world, but only cause a great amount of awakening in some ways. At least that's what we're hoping for. But it does not seem like there's much that we can do to stop it at this point. The anger and the attacks have already begun. I will have to monitor it very carefully and send information forward that might calm things down at least for a while. Okay, and if you can send energies and we are sending energies as well to calm things down yes and pass the message along yeah. to everyone in the galaxy <laughs> yeah we all know thank you very much you're welcome thank you uh eva has a question um hi grindal and thank you so much for being here and helping yeah. oh hi eva yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I have a questions. Um, the first one is about there are a lot of sighting, uh, sightings of wild animals who seem to feel completely comfortable with humans and not afraid of us. Um, is it a good thing? And what is happening in the area, if you know? My second one is about FBI and Trump. It, is it true that FBI had a lot of connection with Cabal, the deep state, and Trump is trying to basically end those connections? Um, if you know anything about it, thank you. Well, all right, first question first. All right, you see, um, you realize that the earth is right now going through a great disturbance. There's more earthquakes and more volcanoes than ever before at this time this is uh causing a ripple effect across the the surface of the earth um the that rumbling it does not just stop whenever the earthquake stops it continues to move around the earth and causes great disruption in in uh, uh and around the world the animals that you're talking about are under unaware of humans at the time because the earth is uh, disheveled. Their senses are not picking up all that they should be picking up because the earth has broken the wavelength between human and animal. There is a wavelength and a sense, a smell, if you will, also that they can take on in their instinctive states that causes them to run from humans, causes them to hear and smell things uh, that now they are having trouble doing because the earth in its ripple effect from all these rumblings and all these volcanoes, all the earthquakes and all the changes in the energy of the earth are causing disruption in their senses. So they cannot properly smell, feel, hear like they used to. And so without these senses, they do not observe properly. And many of them have um, great eyesight, but they are no looking in the different direction and they depend on their other senses to be able to detect if there are people around, and if they are looking away, they will not detect anything. If they are looking straight at you and still do not move, their other senses are not being uh, fulfilled and they are wondering what is happening. They are, their instincts are not being fulfilled. And so they stand there and they're confused. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does. Thank you. So, so that is why you're seeing so many animals, birds, um, and different creatures just standing there in front of you, not seeming to be afraid because 
they smell no fear they smell no human being they they are not aware of their total senses so they are confused and this is causing a disruption in the animal kingdom all around the world and also in the ocean your second question about trump and the and the, was it the fbi or cia fbi um let me put it this way trump only cares about his own agenda he's not caring about the cabal's agenda he's not caring about uh, Illuminati's agenda. He is not caring about anybody's agenda. He has learned to uh, just uh, uh, to tune them out, just like he learned to tune out the voices of America. He does not care what all Americans think. He is just doing what he thinks he needs to do to keep the people happy that are still happy with him which is a small percent, 30% maybe. He is trying to keep those people still happy with him because he realizes they cannot see through his guys. Everyone else can see through to see that he is not a truthful person and not a person of great character. But yet, he has made some positive inroads how because he is a bully because he is a threat to the world other people are afraid of him and so they are listening because they don't want the wrath of trump on them that's what's happening in north korea he is afraid afraid not to listen to trump because he believes trump is a man of action and he is really not so he has stopped his action. All his actions were doing is warning people that he had these particular energies. But you see, it was to keep people away from him, not to draw people to him. He is too small to ever start or wage a war of any kind. And he knows it. Even with China as an ally, they cannot totally rule the world the way he wants so he he is backed off now do not think that trump is controlling anything but his own agenda he does not care about what the cabal thinks and they are aware of that and that is why some of his people have turned against him because he wants his agenda and they want their agenda and the illuminati is falling apart why because they are scientists and intellects doctors and lawyers those people that are high thinkers and now what is happening there is a metaphysical movement going on that does not support science everything that they deal with is scientific if it cannot be proved that it is not part of their scientific analysis and now there are many things happening that are not scientific and people are not following science they are following uh their magic they're following energies that are not from this earth or not were not from this earth but are now part of it and they cannot adjust to just being intellectual and ruling in that way they have to change and they won't and so they fall apart does that make sense to you yeah, yeah. because the missions are being guided by god not science and when something is guided by god which hasn't happened for a long time in many ways it was all scientific and intellectual and get a degree and learn this and learn that but now god is interceding and causing people to act differently 
And therefore, the cabal and the Illuminati are falling apart or having trouble staying together at certain levels. They're still there, of course. Yeah. All right. I'm being too serious. No. Oh. <laughs> All right. We do have more questions for you. All right. Is that okay? Oh, okay? uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you yeah. for that involved answer, though. No. Yeah. Very serious this time. Oh, okay. I know. I hate myself. Don't hate yeah. yourself. Yeah. You usually have comic relief, you know? But today I'm like, oh, Mr. Serious, oh, uh, Mr. Uh, get on your soapbox kind of thing. Yeah. What other questions do you have? Okay, this is a question from Maz. And he is saying that in 1995, uh, back in the, uh, in the Khor Khorazan province in Iran in 1995, yeah. um, there was someone that was abducted by an ET uh, race called the Marlik. He's Marlick. not sure. Uh, he, he thinks that's what they're called. And they're from the Sirius constellation. And he wants to know about that race and their specific uh, purpose for interacting with the humans. That uh, the Marlik race is sort of an introverted race. They do have space travel capabilities and are very advanced. However, they don't want to really be well known in the universe and they're not a helpful species. They are one of more neutrality than they are of uh, forward uh, motion to help the earth. Uh, they, they really don't uh, see the earth in the same way as uh, many other species because they are not, um, humanoid they are of a different kind of uh i do not know what kind of a species they evolve from but it is not a humanoid species so their interest in this one particular person was that he contained some information uh that they needed and it was about their health uh their um Planet is going through health issues at this time. They had wiped out disease on their planet at one time, but now it is returning. The reason why it is returning is because their evolutionary status has made them weaker. They're thinner, more susceptible. Their immune systems have gone down, and now their medications that used to work with the immune systems are not working properly. And they're finding they're in a, a time of greater disease and they cannot uh, fight it because their immune systems are so, uh, uh, what is the word? It's they're, um, given, they're given over to, um, uh, no, no immunity. So, um, one thing I wanted to say about this person that they picked up was that they, that one person that they picked up was the only person on the planet that had one of the diseases that they were suffering from and they discovered him. And so they took him and they wanted to, to use his blood to uh, cure that particular disease for them. Does that answer your question? I, I believe so. They are so. Making, uh, because he has this very unusual disease, um, and he, it's not noticeable to him or anyone else, and it is not a disease that is found on Earth, but... Um, Somehow he contracted it, and they're using his blood cells to try to work on a serum that will cure their people of that particular disease. Thank you for that. Dave has a question now. 
Yeah. If it's okay. We do have, we have two more questions. We have Dave and Leela. Actually, Leela's first and Dave's second. So let's All right, all right. Hi, Grendel. I have a question about the reptilians or Dracos. They were Draco, Dracos, Dracos, Wasa. Who the were, Wasa Draco. Mm -hmm, who were attacking Gaia and light workers. Yes, I know who they are, yes. Is there any update how they are doing with the attacks? They're not getting through as easily. The blue avians have discovered a way, and also there are many creator beings around the planet right now that are stopping them from doing a full attack. This is also part of the prophecies for this planet that there will be certain people that are brutally attacked by the Wasa Draca. And they have already been attacked for the most part. And now they are being stopped in many in many instances. The attack may start, but it is also ended within a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. You know, I have a, a new dreams, uh, demons in my dreams, and I when I see them, I go immediately towards them to heal them. And, uh, yes. and, they and the, the dream disappears. So can you tell me what, I mean, it they don't sounds want like- They here. Hmm? I'm sorry to say, they like the way they are. And so mm -hmm. when you come toward them, they don't want your healing, so they go. Oh, wow. so that is a good sign. Because yes, I it's really- it's a good sign I'm that you're a good healer and a bad sign that they don't want to be healed. Right, but because the I, thing is, that's why when you go near anything negative that does not want a healing, it will leave you. Right. Uh, that is so the that's, same with anybody else out there that of does healing. There may be people coming to you for healing, and they want that healing and positivity and want to get rid of their whatevers. So that's a wonderful thing. But if there are those that are around you that seem to stay away from you at all costs they do not want their entities to be healed they they are holding on to their negativity right i am never attacked so i don't worry about it uh, uh my you're question, strong enough to withstand that's what i was told um yes what is about the wasa dracos if i would send them healing do I have enough? They would refuse it, but you can do uh -huh. it anyway. One, Should they I? They are energy beings. They are almost completely energy beings. They are. They have no corporeal body as far as being able to see them, but um, they are in a very high dimension. When they attack, it's purely energetic. It's like getting hit with a lightning bolt or getting hit by. Um, fireball or getting hit by something that they create the sensation that they want to inflict so yes they are very unkind but is that even possible to send them healing and make a uh, progress i do not know but i wouldn't stop sending it because if all things are possible my dear all things are possible right um the last question about i would like to connect to my heart or aspect as she was a healer in egypt to enhance my healing powers and you have already connected there you've already connected there uh can i can you tell me in public her name or it is rather for private uh the uh the connection you have for healing uh, from the e Egyptian world? Yes. Uh, Tamaratap. Okay. Uh, okay, so it is possible that I can access the heart or energy from that time in this life? Yes, it is possible, but more likely in your next. Yes. That makes complete sense. Then is the last question. I have a lot of uh, hukola people 
criticize me, that they don't like my questions. I am this, I am that. I don't even know those um, people. Do it, does it affect you the way you feel? Uh, no, but I would like to know what the problems they have with me. I don't know who color people. I don't interact with them in private. And there's always well, somebody. Do not worry about it. Just accept who you are and what you are. Other people may try to put their thought processes on you, but you must just accept yourself for who you are. They will not be able to change you. They will not be able to influence you because you are who you are. You are that way for a reason. And if they don't like it, that is fine because no one will like everyone. And um, there are sometimes, there are reasons for people to be not liked. And I will explain it to you someday in private. Okay. My question was uh, more for everybody else because it is not only that I would not like to change, I'd rather like to understand because where the attacks come from and why the other people so disturbed about my questions, it is just well, insane the, from my point of view. Uh, well, it, it, obviously you are concerned or else you wouldn't be asking these questions. Because it's happening often. I am attacked when I am in the workshop in personal way by who color people. I am criticized well, I think, all I think the we time. We're in the place for this right now. So well, I think that we after, should after years of conversation. I was, because I this was is in this place. group before you, and I would like to clarify because I don't want to have people attack me all the time. I do not attack nobody. All right, it's a private, so don't attack me anymore. I know, but we're on a we're on a broadcast for exactly. A lot so of the other should learn what's going on. Okay, why don't we just why don't we just move on to something else at the moment? And if you want to have a conversation with Jim after that, I think that's probably possible. Thank you. I have a question. Dave has it. Is this Dave? Yes. Okay, go ahead, Dave. Hey, Grindel. Greetings. <laughs> You're feeling a bit better, actually. That's good. Yes, I I, I know how to uh, deal with things, but it is it's okay. What's your question? I was actually wondering. Uh, I've been hearing a lot about prophecy from different oracles and different extraterrestrial beings. Absolutely. And stuff like that. Yes. Are they referring to the prophecy of the planet moving from a vibration of zero to one? They are well, talking about several different prophecies. There are many prophecies that are about this planet. That is one of them, yes. Okay, because I hear like a lot of people talking about that. And then even the stuff that you mentioned earlier was talking about the possibility of war. And I don't know if that's the planet naturally losing the lower vibrational people or... Mm, not exactly, but it is a change that has to happen. They have to, this, the only way that these people are going to change their thought process is, is if they see something that, um, that changes them internally and, and mentally. So it is going to be a time of revelation for those. And some, for some, it will be a very dark revelation, and, but it will bring about a great lightning to them because they will realize what what they are doing and how they have been uh, creating a cycle of hatred over thousands and thousands of years. Mm. And uh, the second part of my question was, um, do you have a general timeline of when this planetary shift will take place? That depends on humanity. Humanity makes the decisions when things happen. The karma of the planet is what is the, the identity of your planet, is what makes up and controls the things that happen on the planet. Now, Gaia controls what happens to Gaia in most cases, but uh, humanity uh, is the, uh, 
the creator of war. Humanity is the creator to, of the karma that exists on this planet. And, and it is the at, the, at the right time in that karma, things will happen as they should or as they are predicted to happen. But the karma of the world is um, set to have a, a time release if you will. And can I ask, I've heard the year 2022, and I know timelines shift all the time and parallel. No reasons. man will know the time. Okay. Man changes his mind all the time. Man changes his thought processes one to the other. It's a fickle race, but most are intact. But there are some great leaders with great power that change their minds or or switch their thought processes. And this changes some of the karma. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Good. Okay, thanks very much. That's all I have. Very well, thank you. Um, Gwenda, we still have two people that have a question for you, if that's okay. Uh, all righty. We don't like you to leave us, we like you. Christine uh, has a question and then Sheer. Yeah. Hello, Grindle. Yeah. Blessings to you. Blessings. Um, um, I'd like to know. Um, sorry, my phone ring. Um, I'd like to know. Some time back, we heard that the King of the Greys, um, had a um leap in consciousness. Yes, um, he turned positive in the, from a negative realm. Yes. Yes. Um, that we have a. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, I was wondering how the progress is going. How his... Well, actually, it's not doing that great. Let me tell you why. Okay. Picture that you are a negative race and you've always been against certain things and for a very long period of time. You've always been set and your habits are set to do certain things. Well, this king and his family have changed to be a positive species that they are turning their back on negativity and the, and the results of negativity. 30% of their species decided to go with that king. The rest of them fell away and are, another, uh, are still Zeta Grays as far as the negative. But there is a positive version of the, the Zeta Grays now also. However, within the last several months, some of that species, 30%, has also fallen away because they cannot do it. They cannot live that way. They have been so ingrained with negativity that they, they it's now down to about 18% of the population is still with the king. However... That 18% is tenacious, and they are holding on to that positivity. They are holding on to the greater good. Sounds almost like uh, Iran and Egypt and all that area. Yes. Thank you, Grindel. You're welcome. Hey, Grindel, it's Sheer. Greetings, Sheer. Uh, me and Evie ask of you if you could speak with the Israeli government and tell them not to ask us for reserve duty because... Uh, All right, well, I'll tell you what. I can get a subliminal message across that way, but if I were to do that, I would reveal my identity, and that's not something I can do. But I can do a couple things for you, and I will do what I can. Can you also ask uh, my contacts, you know, who am I speaking of, if he can um, talk with them directly and tell them you're not going to send them... You no, know, um, I understand what you're saying. I will get in touch with your contact. Thank you very, 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 very much. You're welcome. I can't promise anything because 
um, your government is different than many governments of the of the world. They are very, very stubborn. Excuse me for saying so. But just like the United States, uh, the Middle East is a very stubborn place. Each country sticks to their guns. And if they say they're going to do something, they usually don't back down. And if they have already determined some things, you're not going to get out of it that easy. But we're going to make sure that um, you don't have to go. I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, there's a question in Jim's room. Yeah. I don't know who's logged yeah. in as you. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's thing. logged in as you. Yeah. One thing, and I'm agreeing with the one gentleman. Do you need some healing right now? No, I'm good. All right. Yeah. Also, you are loved, my friend. Oh, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, don't spread it around. Oh, we yeah. know. Yeah. We love you. We love you, Grendel. Yeah, I um, love I you. I just have one more question. Huh? My people have gotten used to me saying it, so they, they just, when they, they talk to me and say, do you really love those people? Really? I mean, really? Do you love that? I would say, yeah, they're they're pretty cool. So I don't really make a big deal out of it. But my people are like, how can you love them? They're so ugly. So we do our best. Yeah. We're yeah not, we don't right, have a lot to yeah. work with. Well, but, you know, yeah. I'm no beauty to you guys. So I go, uh, yeah. Uh, All right. Uh -huh. We have one more question if you if you can take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's from the chat. It's from Krellick. And he says, how can a civilization still have kings as a form of leadership and not be corrupted? Many people on earth kings think autocracies can't work in advanced societies. That's his question. Kings are so popular throughout the universe as a way of ruling. Let me tell you why. It puts less stress on the people of the planet trying to elect somebody, trying to think about who would be good. They find a a bloodline that has been always very pure and very um, uh, intellectual and have great thought processes, and they feel comfortable with uh, giving a bloodline uh, the uh, rule. Now, if if they do have rules that say that if a certain leader is not following through with what they feel is correct, they will bring a different leader from the family in. And um, that is the only time that they will probably vote is on which part of the, who they want in the family to take that pl person's place. But it's a, a long, drawn-out thing. So, But there are kings all over the place in the universe. And it takes off the stress from, from the people. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. I believe it will make sense to him. Makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't always work. But it does help the people... I mean, it's they've been doing it for thousands and thousands of years. You've had kings on your planet, and that thought process came from off world. Um, let me let me describe something. When aliens first came to this planet, they could not communicate with your people because they did not have the words to translate. So they would put, they would take someone from the population and put a ring on his head and or her head, and that was a translator ring. That translator would help them to understand what the aliens were saying and tell the people what was going on with these this certain species. That the person that they chose became someone very popular and at times they made them what they would now call a king or a queen because that 
a crown on their head was actually a, a translating machine. It was something of a high profile. And so they, those people became kings and queens after the aliens left. Does that make sense to you? Yeah, is, and is that why this sort of the king or the was also considered the god at that time? Or? Yes, because they had powers that no one else had. They could understand the aliens. This ring, the translator that they put on their heads, also could do other things, of course. Beam them different places and uh, do different things. And so they became superhuman to... Uh, the, those around them. And um, this was a very interesting beginning of how people looked at king uh, at royalty. That bloodline was considered special because they could uh, because the aliens let them do these special things. They were chosen. Hmm. Christine has a quick question in regards to that. Yes. Yes, Grindel, do any of the crowns of today have that ability to translate or to... Um... That's a good question. Um, there is one crown from ancient Mesopotamia that does still have that ability. It is considered a valuable relic, and it was taken off of the earth. Oh. But it was from Mesopotamia, and they within the last few hundred years, removed it from the planet and put it in the relic collections. Now, um, because um, aliens are being talked about more and more and more, um, does that mean that maybe some of these translators or new translators will start being um, divvied up or uh, moved around to some people or is it just um, channeling? Channeling is the new thing. Channeling is the new thing, but let me tell you, they're not allowed to come in third dimension, and that's why you don't have the translator rings. They're not allowed on Earth in the third dimension. Your governments do not allow it. The galactic government does not allow it. Your galactic government does not allow people to leave this planet uh, in third dimension to go anywhere because it is... Uh, the new galactic law within the last 40 years or 50 years that it is not allowed to happen. Um, when this meeting between the um, so-called aliens, excuse me if that's insulting to you. and um, no, aliens is actually preferred. Okay. And all these other um, uh, world leaders, when they get to – meet with you guys um are any of the royal families represented or are they even interested oh absolutely era president ken Jean, um mayan president uh mayan king um tosca and the jondai council that is there uh king uh, i can't even pronounce his name Kwaya. Uh -uh. um there are many of the kings and queens from maya era Tara and uh, Palana here um, being born into human bodies so that they can affect the um, ascension. Are the, any of the um, royal families that we know of on third dimensional earth, do they go to any of these meetings? Yes, of course. The Queen of England is an alien, so therefore she must attend. Cool. Thank you. There are other leaders on your world that are alien born humans. So it is the way it is. Hmm. Um, Temple has a question for you. Temple. Hello. Hi, Grendel. Um, I have a question about um, the, what did we call them? Council the nine. Council of Nine. We just started looking into it. Yes. Can you give us any information on it? Is it just one group that that kind of has gone around? So that's why, like the it's a the very ancient group with nine representatives from nine species. Is that what you have found so far? That's what I was guessing. Yes, um, it's nine representatives from nine species. 
these are higher species, not your third dimensional types usually. There, I believe there is one third dimensional species in the Council of the Nine, but it's a higher end third species. They're about ready to evolve into the fourth dimension. So it is that this is a higher dimensional group on um, the prophecies that have, uh, have come to pass and that are about to come to pass. They are also here for counsel if necessary. There are many councils out there wanting to give their own uh, information about what is happening. They feel that they can help with the ascension process or the next step in evolution for mankind. However, sometimes it can be a little problematic because people do not understand from what angle or perception that they are coming from and it doesn't seem plausible or even right. But yet, from their point of view, they are telling what they see. Does that make sense? I think so. And so, um, are they still, do they still have um, stuff with our planet? And like, how does Valium? Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. They are still connected to your planet through these prophecies. The, okay. uh, they will never be disconnected from you. And does, does Valium Thor have anything to do with them? The, the alien guy who came from Venus? Thor has something to do with your world. His hammer has been discussed many times in the last several weeks. Oh, that's the and wrong Thor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, what this Thor? One, Valiant Thor. He was a, supposedly oh. from Venus, and then our government picked him up, and he was supposed to uh, give us oh, some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Is right. he related to the Council of Nine? Um, he has a connection with them, but he is not in it. Okay. Okay. I think, uh, I think that's my questions. Thank you. Did I give you appropriate answers? Is or that a question? <laughs> you need a deeper discussion with it. Well, I just, I wanted to know more about them. And um, I know a bit about like the Egyptian portions, but when I looked into it, they, they sort of were implemented all over and they still have yeah. like Council of yeah. Nine. Yes. And there was a time when they were we were on Earth, and some of them at least were. Uh, but of course, the council members changed out in time. They they only are there for a certain amount of time, and then they move on. Okay. To, and someone else from their population or their species comes and takes over a fresh point of view, if you will. But I think it is that they can stay with the council up to forty. Uh, 45 or 50 earth years, something like that. Cause that is a, only a short period of time for them. Right. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Is there other questions or should I go? Um, Leela had one question on the council of nine. In relation. Yeah. No. Yes. I have a, uh, I have a question and a very short comment. The Council of Nine is connected to Bhagavad Gita. Do you know that? Yes. Uh, in the Council of Nine, uh, the, the one member, is his name is Warwick. Do you know what uh, species he is? Yes. Can you tell us? He is a, he is a Kashun. Uh, uh, Okay. They are a very high species. And the Council of Nine is uh, uh, connected not only to the Bhagavad Gita, but many of the uh, religious books that are written on this planet, they've had a hand in putting some information in. All right. Uh, great, great information. Thank you, Grendel. And yes, we love you. Thank you, dear. Spread yeah. it around in too. galaxy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you spell Kashun with the K or with the C? K. Is it Kashun K A S H U N E? Kashun, yes. Okay, thank you for clarity. That you can spell it any way you want, just so you pronounce it right. 
Well, I just, yeah, it's nice to be consistent. <laughs> yeah, that would be an earthly spelling of it, yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. All right, I think we've reached the end of our questions. All right, well, I'll bring someone else in. Uh, they must be tired of me by now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's not yeah. possible. Well, anyway, have a great day, everyone. I, I hope I didn't, I wasn't too serious. You'll have to ask me back on a, a, le a lighter note. <laughs> all right. Take care. Much love. Yeah. Thank you. We love you. Thank you, Grando. You're awesome. Okay. One minute. This is St. Germain. Greetings. You are the one that we did not guess was coming. So welcome. Thank you for coming. What do you mean? Sometimes in between channels, we, we try to uh, see who's coming next. So we, we, were, we were... There were others that were going to come, but mm. did not have a suitable message for this day. <laughs> Well, we, we welcome you very much. Uh, St. Germain, you were one of the very first uh, uh, beings I learned about years ago. And, and for many of us, it's, uh, it's the same. Well, what sure. did you learn? Well, I, knew, we, I learned that you were in charge of the violet flame. And I learned oh. violet flame meditation. I also, uh, when I was living in New York City, I went to the St. Germain Foundation and, and read many books on your incarnations and the different teachings that you had throughout time. I was I, sort of an abstract version of the Christ figure. Yes. I was hoping one day you would just show up again, maybe walking down the street in New York City. It is possible. Mm -hmm. There is someone that I do work as a higher self for, and mm -hmm. so therefore I do work on this planet in some way. But what questions would you have for me today? Okay, they we have shared that I would be able to answer more questions that in a in a better way than some of the others. Okay, Sheer, go first, and then we'll we have a, we have a list of people wanting to ask questions, but Sheer is first. I knew it. Um, hello, this is Nivi. How are you doing? Greetings, Nivi. Um, I want to ask about <clears throat> um, if it's appropriate, if it's an appropriate time to speak about the funds that you are in charge of. <laughs> the St. Germain Trust Fund. Yes. It is part of what you would call the Vatican or the, or the Catholic monies. It was started a long time ago. And my name was put on it because it is a distribution of funds to those that do not have any at this time. It's an equalization of world uh, monetary units. Now, the time has come 
for this money to be released at some point in the near future. I cannot tell you exactly when that is, but those of you who are, that are holding uh, things that are attached to the St. Germain Fund, hold on to them. They will not be worth the face value that is given on the bills, but they will be of a greater value than anyone could imagine. These, okay. these funds have been growing over the years. They are now much more valuable than they ever were in the past. And they were very valuable when they were started. Worth millions of dollars, now worth billions of dollars. Hey, uh, this is Shir. Kareem. Um, yes. I want to ask you if you are one of Jesus' reincarnations. Yes, in... I had an aspect of Jesus in me when I was on the earth. Yes. Ah. Very interesting. <clears throat> and well, also you know, I did not act like Jesus in many ways. I was not a savior, but I did have I did have control and knew about the violet flame, and that was a godly entity. That was a godly energy, I should say. And the violet flame is still in use today in holy fire. The violet flame is obviously evident. And are you a, a reincarnation of uh, Francis Bacon as well? An aspect of Francis is within me as well. <laughs> I was a multifaceted individual, as you can see by my history. Uh, anything more that you can uh, tell us about yourself, about what you did here or your mission right now? I was I was bringing mystic energies to the earth, mystic understandings, but in a very third dimensional way. I tried to bring in uh, the understanding of higher powers, of higher energies, and made it not so that people would be bored with God's energy, but would be more fascinated with the mysticism of who he was and how he operates, because he operates in many, many ways above and beyond that of third dimension, as you know. So I was trying to relate to humanity in a way that was third dimensional, yet pointing out how God's energies were not really third dimensional in many ways, but all dimensional and all powerful. This was one of the things that I wanted to bring to the earth, and I hope that I was able to get that through my message in some way. Of course, I had many other minor and more... Uh, third dimensional messages as well but you understand what i'm saying yes and do you have maybe a message for us right now maybe something regarding the upcoming war in the middle east upcoming what uh, the war the conflict between israel iran and the entire uh, region only that it has been prophesied that there will be one i do not know about it in details I know about it in the fact that the animosity exists and it is being carried out at this time, but I am not involved with that really. I am involved with uh, the fact that there are more energies on the earth now that are given over to God energies, that are given over to manifestation energies, that are given over to creative, if you want to call them more creative than manifestive. I'm not sure how you would go about bringing the actual thought process into the brain about uh, these energies, but they are definitely here and they are here to stay. Thank you very, very much and much love to you. Much love to you as well. I sense there's more questions. 
Is there any here? Hello? Yes, yes we have, David is next. Yes, very good. Hello, good to speak with you. Good to speak with you as well. I'm uh, curious about my recent travels to your foundation in Montana uh, with a person. I chose to go. The person said he was um, a reincarnation or, or a lot of aspects, a great energy of you. And I'm curious about this and how come it, it uh, didn't work out when we got to the foundation, if there's anything you can tell me about this and if they might invite us back at some point. It wasn't yet your time, obviously. That is why you were turned away. And also this person that has aspects of me, that is correct. I just mentioned earlier that I do have, I'm working as a higher self. I do have other aspects of myself on this planet. And I am very happy to work with the people and the enlightenment of this era. Beautiful. Are they going, they were donated some funds that is part of your trust fund. Do they still have that? Are they going to uh, believe Absolutely. that? Absolutely. I told you that there will be a time when it will be released. I am not sure when, but I know that it will be, and you must be patient and wait for it. No, I just meant that we, they were donated, we had given them some funds, but since they didn't believe in us that we were who we said we were and turned us away, that they might not believe in the funds that we gave them. Oh, do not worry. All things in the right time. There are reasons for everything. And so do not be discouraged. Okay, beautiful. Thank you, much love. You're welcome. Has a question? Very well. Hello, St. Germain. This is Amanda. Greetings, Amanda. I had an incident on a flight, connecting flight, where I had a very lovely steward, extremely flamboyant and eccentric. And he was beautiful and amazingly entertaining. He handed me a card, a business card on the violet flame. Who was that? Ah. I'm not sure who it was, but I could look into that. But he was someone that was supposed to contact you and give you the aspects of God that he felt that you needed to see. You see, he was telling you that there is much more joy, much more flamboyance, much more color in life than what you are experiencing. And he wants to make sure that you will Find that and become part of it because he knows that your uh, mission will be uh, one of great joy. And he is just connecting with you to make sure that you find that joy in a greater way than you ever have before. Thank you. I, I will never forget him. It was definitely very true of my situation at the time of what you said. Yes. He wants to bring joy into your life. He wants you to, himself to be memorable. He is the example of joy that he wants you to experience. Thank you very much. Contact him if you wish. You just ask for him an astral? The thing is about this person also is that he has a great deal of wisdom and he might be able to help you in some way. There may be some um, metaphysical aspects to him that would be helpful. Maybe not. But I am seeing that he gave you the card for a purpose. Yes, I could get that. And I had this very otherworldly sense about him. Yes. He was, he there was definitely probably. otherworldly, yes. Yes. Uh, does he have a name or... Is it not to be communicated? You mean an earthly name or a spiritual name? Either way in which I may call upon him. He has an aspect of some angels within him. Angels are very uh, unisexual looking and acting. They do not have sexuality in the angel realm. So they look ambigu ambiguous. And he was... Showing you, though, even though 
um, he was a male, he had flamboyance of a female, and that was very angel connections. He has an angel connection, and that angel is Raguel. Interesting. Okay, I believe I know which angel that is. And I could sense the energy about him. That's why I wanted to know who he was. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much for that information. Bless you. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, Leela had a question for you. I don't, do you still have a question for him? Or? Yes. Okay, great. My uh, blessing. And uh, yeah. he has uh, two questions. Uh, are you aware about the energy of our oceans? If they get uh healed or how is the healing going healing is going all right let me explain all the different healing modalities that are being used on especially the pacific ocean and the atlantic ocean as well the the um uh, clairs who are at the bottom of the ocean up to the north and in domes underneath in the deepest areas of the Pacific are also taking uh, radiation out of the waters from the Jap the Japanese areas that had three uh, of the reactors melt down. Much of that area was condemned for a while, but there are those from other planets that are also working on removing radiation from near the coast of Japan so that it won't go into the water any deeper. Also, there has been many whales, dolphins, and such the like that are also have contacted the Whale and Dolphin Alliance from Pleiadia and Andromeda, and they are also sending energies that can nullify radiation and its effects. So there are many different things happening your world is also involved in removing radiation as much as possible with their limited technological understanding. They are still removing perhaps one to 2% of it um, within a month or two month time periods, but that is still a great feat for them. But most of the radiation is being removed by other sources from off planet so we humans are not doing enough healing or we should do more healing oh yes i forgot to mention the half whores uh, are doing toning on the waters and they're sending their uh great representative sarah oxidine to do toning on the waters they're also sending um all kinds of people to send energies to the waters, to uh, the different creatures in the waters, and there are all kinds of humans doing healing. I was just speaking of the technological uh, portion, but human beings are definitely sending healing modalities all through that area and helping the ocean to heal. Mm -hmm. uh the next question is very unusual. It is about DNA rewriting. Uh, how that goes? Because I was told, my friends in Agartha told me that my DNA is rewriting itself. So could you explain us the process? Because I can imagine that would happen to many and it's very- not exactly, It's not exactly rewriting. But every human now has been born, every human that has been born within the last uh, 50 years, 60 years, has a third strand of DNA that is in fourth dimension because that is the next portion of uh, evolution is to actually have telepathy and uh, these kinds of things. Some humans are now developing that third strand. It is not rewriting DNA, but adding to it. It's uh, giving additional DNA to the DNA that is already in third dimension. Now, let me tell you this. Fourth, dimensi fourth dimensional portholes have been open for a while now, as you also know. 
So you, you are getting the effects of greater fourth dimensional energy throughout the planet at all times. It is still very low, but it is a starting to affect some humans in very interesting ways. Channeling, um, psychic energies, bilocating, and rewriting of DNA. That is for your next uh, life, pretty much, so that it will be more advanced in the next world. But your DNA is enhancing itself. You are becoming a greater healer. You're became, becoming more aware of things uh, around you. And sometimes that is why you get attacked is because they want to keep you down. Disregard it completely. If you, if you don't want to be attacked, then don't say anything. But if you, if you want to continue to act and, and be part of the world, then you, may, you have to grow a tougher skin and just um, uh, don't even care about what other people think because you're doing it for a purpose and a reason and these things have to come out. They benefit someone else, even though not the person that is attacking you, obviously. They, they obviously think that you're not, your purpose is not positive, but do not worry about that. That is not not what you were there for. So um, you have a distinct purpose for healing. You have a distinct purpose for what you are doing. So you must disregard everything else. You know, uh, only just a comment to everybody because my interesting experience with the attacks in the dreams is I love it because it is show me where I'm standing and just, uh, I like the demons when they come to me i'm a little bit shocked because i see them and i just like i just go and try to help so, so you have to do what actually, you have to do yes yeah, it is actually a great uh and um, no one else may even understand what you're going through or what you were doing but that is all right you you do what you do thank you at least you understand me thank you all right have a good day. Who else is there? Marlene has a question. Yes, Marlene. Greetings, Saint Germain. First, thank you so much for the powerful, and that's the word that's a little meek right now, the powerful energies that you're bringing in from the group that you're sitting with right now. So thank you very much. Yes. I'm sitting with a powerful group. You are correct. The energies of this group are here for a reason. This group is consistent. They are here constantly, from what I understand, and they are holding energies for the channel because uh, there will be those that would try to knock out those energies and take over with negative messages, but that will not happen with these particular people here. Yes, and thank you also. I'm grateful for the powerful energies that you're bringing down where you are located right now. It's truly needed. Your energies are truly needed right now as a group in the etheric planes and dimensions right now. Thank you all very much. You are very welcome. Yes. My question, uh, my first question is concerning your etheric retreat in Transylvania. Is it, can we access it right now? Uh, by bilocating or uh, on a physical level to receive teachings? If you are able to bilocate there, then you are able to do so. Those people that are able will be able to do so and gain some information from it. If you are not able to bilocate, you must meditate on the councils that are happening there and information will come to you that is necessary for you in particular and for no one else. Thank you. Uh, the other question is concerning Portholagos. Can you expand on it and its role right now? It has been serving us, serving our planet and um, other dimensions for a long time. Um, I understand his its mission may be become a little different in uh, the coming well, times. As the world changes, of course, everyone's mission changes along with the energies that are here. And so you must 
be able to use the energies that are here to be able to move forward in your missions. And that is one of the reasons why I've come today is to let you know that all of you are adaptable to the new energies, the new understandings. And this, the energies that you talk about that are changing with this individual, with this entity, is that they are so strong already in this, in this realm and they adapt very easily to the changes and have already become very adapted to them. And you will find that the information coming from there will be quite enlightening and quite third dimensional in some ways, but also uh, reaching into the fourth dimension from the third dimension. Does that make sense to you? Yes. And because of that, it will be very grounded information. It will be information that is necessary for certain people to maintain, not, uh, not to start, but maintain their particular missions. Those that have already started, this one will help them to maintain their position, maintain their energy. He is not there to start, uh, to help people start but to help them maintain and bring them into greater understandings as time goes on. Because he is so adaptable, there are others there to help people start their missions. He is here to maintain and keep missions on track. Thank you for the clarification. No and problem. lastly, lastly, Adonai Tsebayot. Yes. Keret Sambata. Thank you. That was Marlene, and now we have Temple. Thanks, Marlene. Thank you. Hello. Um, I have kind of an odd question. My husband actually has the question for you. Did, uh, did Bacon write Shakespeare's stuff? Now, that is a good question. And, you know, and many people have said that other people have written Shakespeare's works, but you must understand uh, that Shakespeare was not fully human and that his work was uh, very joyful. In, uh, even though it was tragic at some places, he tried to bring as much joy into the truth as he could. And uh, many people could see that he had similarities with uh, uh, some of the other poets at the time, and Bacon and others, uh, it, it was said to me uh, and to others that not only he, uh, William Shakespeare was, a, was an actual fraud that everybody else wrote his works for him, but that is a not, not true. He was, um, he was a, a very unusual energy for this planet. And uh, people would tend to misunderstand him as a human being. And so they wanted to bring a, a greater understanding of him to themselves. So they equated him with other people. Okay. So okay. they are two different things. I have one more question. Um, yes. So I suppose since the attacks or even a little bit before, like I have almost feel like I'm like turned, turned off and I'm not sure if there's something I can do to like get myself back on track or what's going on. If you have any uh, help with that. I can, I can help with that because I understand that the attacks have turned off some people. They feel that they have been turned off. However, that is the illusion that the attacks create. You have not been turned off. You must find in yourself the energies that are still there, because they are all there, all of them. They okay. have just masked them for you. And they have, they said, if they're masked, then they won't be used. So I can help you to bring those out again, because all that needs to happen is the the mask of uh, that they are not there has to fall away. You are looking in the mirror and not seeing your own face. You are right. looking you are looking at yourself and not seeing the same energy as there was before. There is a petition 
around you and it must fall away. And as it falls away, then you will realize that all the powers are still there. They're just hiding them from you. Okay, excellent. Because I, uh, they, they took me up and they, they worked on me to heal from the attack. But like, it seems like the actual energy, big whole energy portion is healed, but it's just been really strange since, since yes, everything. Yes, believe me this. Um, when you do your next meditation, I believe that you are a meditator, aren't you? Um, it's a kind of. <laughs> yes. Well, when you do, I believe, one good meditation to take the petitions away will help you to reconnect with your true self. Okay. Your okay. true self, I already see, is very powerful. You have many gifts. Yes, yep. And so therefore, remove this petition, the mask, and they will show up once again. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. You never lose these gifts. They cannot be taken from you. They are something that is a part of you and always will be a part of you. They can mask them from you. They can hide them from you. But they are all there in the same power as they were before. So find them. Okay, so can I can I just kind of command then that the mask fall away type of thing? Yes, too? I would do a meditation, okay. many prayers to God, find it, connect to it. Connect okay. to God because he will help to burn it away, give you the energy of the, go of the God energy you need to burn it just right off. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. Blessings. Blessings. Um, St. Germain, I have a, 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 I'm going to combine a question from the chat because we haven't actually had any questions from there today. But um, there's a question. Someone is asking about uh, swan energy being the same, being related to the violet f uh, flame. And then there's another person that's saying that, um, that they're studying your heart streams on divine alchemy and would like to know your take on its application for life here on the new earth. So maybe you All can... Right combine those <clears throat> questions there's so much there's so much information with that question that Excuse i couldn't me, possibly answer it magic. yeah it's white what swan was magic. that what was that say mm -hmm. that again um the question was was white swan magic is growing how does it work or relate to the violet flame and then the other person was asking about divine alchemy and how does that work so i thought maybe it's the same energy you would. There's a, there's a lot of information about all those things right now. Uh, white swan magic is evident on the earth at 8.4% at this time. And there was one class, white magic class, that taught how to collect it and store it. Uh, there is also the the... Violet flame is always going to be uh, valuable, even though the uh, holy fire is God, the violet flame is within that. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Now, there is so much information about alchemy, and there's so much information about the new magic. It's it would be hard for me to go into that all. But the the, alch the new alchemy is about uh, the way that re real gold, pure gold, is has does have magic properties. And that's why it's valuable everywhere in the universe. Now, there is gold around the heart in in the body of each and every species around the heart there are very tiny fragments of gold or evidences of gold if you had asked your physician about this maybe some of them will have learned that in college or in medical school or whatever but they do not know why but around the heart there is gold flecks and this energy from 
the gold is actually keeping people alive. It's part of the energy that is being uh, drawn into the human being to keep them uh, alive and keep them energetic. These gold flecks are part of life. So the gold and magic that is part of uh, alchemy is that there, I know alchemy can be more than just gold, but I'm talking about the gold alchemy at this time. And so therefore, there is many who want to change things into gold because of the magic content and also the value of the gold, but more for the magic content than for the actual um, money value. It does have interesting and great properties that will come to surface as time moves forward and that magic becomes greater on the Earth's surface. I believe that it will actually reach about 70%. I'm not sure where it will cut off, but it, you cannot have 100% magic on any world. But um, it's going to be quite high here. And once it is high, then people can store it and become mag magicians of the white magic. It would be wonderful to see white magicians. Hopefully, there will be very few dark magicians because it can also be used in that way. But they, uh, I hope there's not that many around. So is that an answer to your question? I could go on and on, but I think that was a basic answer. Well, I think it's a basic answer, and the question was in the chat, so it, it was. It's just so, all right. I to 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 a, a good basis for that. There is properties in gold that humanity has not yet found. Hmm. Okay, um, we are really at the top of the hour. So the question is: Do you want to take any more questions, or are you are you ready to well, go? I will take one more from the chat because you have not done any from there. Okay, um, let me just go back then to... I feel question. that they need to maybe... Explore. Well, this is a very nice question. It's from Lana. We know Lana. Uh, she says, um, she said, it's about humor. She said, um, do we, can we understand what's funny to beings on other planets? Is humor, is humor valued more or less than with other yes, beings? Yes, uh, humor is... Universal, of course. Without joy, there would be no God, really. God is created for joy, love, compassion, all the very, very positive things. And without joy, God would not be fully there. His, If you look at the great spiritual people of the earth, the ones that truly embrace God as the purpose, as the father, as their, as their true energy, you will find that Baba G's and uh, and the, the the great, uh, uh, what are they, Maharajis, have a wonderful sense of humor, have great joy. The Buddha had great joy. They, um, even Shiva and and all the people that in that. All religions showed signs of having great joy and praise and happiness. And without joy and happiness, uh, God is diminished. You must have it. It is powerful. Laughter is powerful. Laughter is healing. as It, it is truly healing to some sad situations. Sometimes it's best to have humor instead of a great amount of sorrow. So therefore, embrace it as part of God's gift to you as humans, that you must have joy. Rejoice, be happy, be joyful, be a part of who he is through his joy. Give joy one to another. How many times... Have you had someone of God come to you and they are, oh, very, very serious and they are not joyful, happy, or even connected to anything that is um, anything that you would want to listen to? 
these persons do not have God completely within them. They have rejected some of his teachings and some of his attributes. Connect fully with God, for he has all positive things to offer. Compassion, love, and joy, and beauty. Be, connect with each other in a beautiful way, a happy way, a loving way. If you do not, then you, you are just um, wasting your time trying to get through any uh, uh, words of God because people are going to look and say, uh, I can't get it from you because you're not relating to me. You're, you're too sad. You're too dull. You're too... Bleh. So joy is part of God. Use it, feel it, understand it. Thank you for that. No one wants to be ugh. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, thank you. For but that. there are those that are ugh out there. They cannot, <laughs> they cannot laugh to save their lives. And That's they need to find the joy of God. Yes. You know, I did. I met a woman uh, recently who told me that she never laughed until she was about 19 years old. Isn't that crazy? That she never wow. had that ability to actually laugh. I, 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 I was struck really deeply by that. I didn't really, uh, I never met anyone who just is, never laughed. It is a gift. It is a gift of God. Joy and laughter are part of who he is and he wants you to share that with him. Yeah. Elga just said laughing is what's kept her alive. I agree with you, Elga. Absolutely. Uh, Dave has a quick question. Um, if, if, if we can make it very quick, Dave. Yeah, for sure. Hello, Saint, Saint Germain. Yes. I just wanted to uh, say something. I was communicating with a Saurian hybrid uh, a few weeks ago. And for her, in her culture, it's very taboo to display emotions and um, because she chooses to choose logic over emotion to give her an advantage in conversations and stuff like that um, because she is reptilian in nature does that love come easily to her as it does to humans and since we're more emotional she has been deceived to, to believe that logic above all things, will answer the questions of the universe. But listen carefully. Without emotions, logic is very flawed. Hmm. Without emotions, logic is flawed. Listen to me carefully. If you do not attach emotions to your decisions, you will make grave errors. Okay. Trust me on this. Uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to touch on that. Thank you. Uh, and I do not put her down for being reptilian in nature. I do not put her down for her belief system. But she, I believe that she is missing a great deal of satisfaction in life as living. And she is missing truth in the sense that emotion is not valuable. Emotions are very valuable and can sometimes save your life. Now, I had the feeling since she was a hybrid, 40% Saurian, that, um, you know, she's conflicted. And would this cause the heart and the throat chakras to close? or It would cause them to eventually close, yes. Or be very dim, not completely out, because if a chakra goes completely out, your life is over. Mm. The energy sources must remain, remain intact in some way. Your chakras must have energy at some point. However, if they go completely out, you will be uh, passing shortly. Even if it's a throat chakra or uh, any of the chakras, if, if one of them goes completely out, your life is, is, is fading. <coughs> That's all I have. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for that question. I think a lot of people will understand um, a little better how to use logic with emotion. Because if you make just logical decisions, like Spock did on the Enterprise, if you will, um, do you see where he could be wrong? And that the addition of emotion was actually what saved the craft and the people in it. Hmm. Think about that. Pure logic is flawed. Thank you. Thank you. Much love to everyone. I have to go now. Yes. And be well. I will speak to you again some other time if you wish. Well, you're always welcome. Please come back whenever you feel the Thank need. Thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. Yes. Much love to you. Much love to you. Why did you do that? Why why did you Sorry, you were just muted. Can someone unmute James, please? Stephanie, don't mute James. <laughs> I didn't know I had that ability. <laughs> I'm yeah, so sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, I said I'm back. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Okay. Who wants to do a closing prayer? When do we have, do we have someone in your room? The ones yes. two or someone in our room? Okay. Does. Oh, who else? Anybody? Someone maybe that hasn't spoken um, in our group. We had a lot of people, new people today, and uh, very shy question askers. So I'd like to encourage anyone who wants to. to uh, I'll do so. Blessing as well. Yeah. All right. Very good. Would you like to go first or second? Uh, whatever you feel like. Ladies first. Why don't you go first? Okay. Ikiti atasarata ta o tiriki anatata si anata arakatu tirisini tiata rinti tiata rata sini ati tiata rasa natarata o kiti arata tarasu kini ti tiriata sa enata u e kiriki atarasiki atarata. The world is going through many changes at this time. Remember to engage with the energies thereof and become a greater entity because of it. Believe that you are being guided through these energies and God is part of them because he has created all energy and he is all energy. Make it that he is your energy of truth and life and love. Very good. That was beautiful, Octorian, by the way. Go ahead. May the illusions of time and those of control be removed. And may you see who you are from within. May strength prevail and may joy exude. These are qualities to be sought after. Remember that and be who you are. Namaste. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Remember that we have the uh, workshop in August 16th through 21st. Go on humancolony.org, and there is a sign-up area there. It's $400 for the five days, which is really cheap. And those of you who have been there know that it was that it's a really cool time. I know that we already have some people signed up already, so that's amazing. Thank you very much. And um, also, remember the book. <laughs> <laughs> From the universe with love. It's on Amazon and yeah. Kindle. And, and it's, it's going to come out in, a, in an audio book soon. 
Sure. And it's called From the Universe with Love, and it's it's available on Kindle. It's a wonderful book. Please go there straight away. And all the proceeds go to help run Human Colony, and uh, so it's w worthwhile. Conversations and, uh, from the Universe via Jim. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and where is the workshop? It's in Dansville, New York. New York. Would you want Wonderful. To Have a great day. Thank you so much, Jim. We love you. Love you too. Nice to see all of you. Thank you, Jim. You're welcome. It's good to see all of you. I'm turning it off, everybody. Bye, everybody that was online. We'll see you next week. Bye bye.